This is Empowered Explant, the podcast helping women ditch their breast implants with confidence. I'm Dana Mosica, a board certified health and wellness coach and explant warrior. And I'm here at the Biohacking Congress in Austin with Brian Richards. He's the founder and CEO of Sauna Space. And we're going to dive into the benefits of infrared saunas and, you know, for detoxing after explant surgery. But there's also so many more benefits that we're going to talk about. So thank you for letting me steal you away for a one-on-one chat, Brian. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. Um, Do you mind if we get a little personal to begin with? Of course. Cool. So you personally had a very life-changing experience with infrared technology. Mm -hmm. Um, which led you down this path, right? Brought you to sauna space. So do you mind speaking about, um, you know, what personal symptoms you were experiencing and struggling with and how this technology helped you? Yeah, I... um, Well, when I was young, not that I'm that old now, but I was in my 20s and uh, got done with my college career and... I was experiencing uh, a strange array of symptoms that now I attribute to uh, adrenal fatigue, Mm. adrenal burnout. I was, I had a lot of insomnia and mind racing where I would just lay in bed and not be able to fall asleep. I was lethargic. I had brain fog. Mm. Um, I also had strange acne um, only here Mm. around my kidneys, you know, my detox Mm -hmm. organs. So if you met me on the street, You'd be like, what's your problem, Brian? You, you look fine, but I didn't feel right. And it was kind of this nebulous array of symptoms that there was not, it didn't seem, there didn't seem to be any good conventional medical solution for. So I was recommended to take Accutane for my acne, which is a mm-hmm. drug that's actually now been taken off the market. It's associated with liver cancer. And so uh, when I heard that, I was like, no. I'm not doing that. I'm doing something more curative, more um, more addressing the root causes. So, I I searched online like everybody else does <laughs> yeah. for a Google. solution. My Google doctor, and I kept coming across the concept of of detoxification and of purification, of purifying the body of poisons using sauna. Mm. Every human culture on Earth has some kind of sauna tradition. Yes. Uh, very, very, um, very much. Um, and so in the end of my research, I discovered Dr. John Harvey Kellogg's electric incandescent light bath. He, uh, so incandescent bulbs were invented as we know them today in 1887. In 1891, Dr. Kellogg f- discovered these bulbs and said, hey, there's something special about the light. Let's make a sauna out of it. So he subsequently did so at his uh, sanitarium in Battle Creek, Michigan, and and tested it on over 50,000 chronically ill patients. He documented over 200,000 sauna sessions, and he wrote a book on all of his uh, results called Light Therapeutics, published in 1910. So Mm -hmm. here we're talking about light therapy and the use of incandescent light bulbs to power a sauna uh, 120 years ago. That's incredible. And, and, and talk about uh, rigorous uh, safe use testing on um, you know, over 50,000 patients. So, mm-hmm. so um, I was shocked by this and I was reading this more modern doctor's just um, explanation of it. And so I, I decided to build my own and I used it two times before wow. bed and I was sleeping fine. So my insomnia was for my purposes, was cured in like two, using Wait, two times. Wait, uh, just after using it twice, that's it. And and you made this yourself. Yeah. The DIY sauna. Yeah, a little cool. bricolage, little uh, little tent. I love yeah, that. With, with uh, these big heat lamp bulbs. Uh-huh. And I had a little office folding chair and I had some painter's cloths and clips. So this was like the original prototype. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, had, it was like plumbing pipe. It was made out of, it was so ugly. Um, <laughs> You, do you still have photos of it today? Uh, yeah, I still cool. have the original. I'm going to I'm gonna show that one day on, a, on, a, on the website because yes. it is cool. Yes, I have all the original prototypes. I love that. So, so yeah, so I was, I was uh, really impressed by that. So mm-hmm. I decided to continue to use it with discipline for six months. Mm-hmm. 
four or five times a week. Okay. And and then slowly but surely I had this realization that it fixed everything that I had. And so I didn't know I had brain fog in the beginning. I thought I was just I was just where I was at. You know, when the car is dirty, you, you throw a little more mud on it, you don't see. You yeah, know? it kind of just becomes your normal, right? It becomes your normal. And that's a lot of people just normalize their pain yeah. and just, well, it's a pain is a part of life. Well, it really it isn't. The human body um, is not designed to be have any chronic pain mm. or any chronic stress, really. it's. Um, but but we all, but there's definitely uh, you have autonomic nervous system programming that you incorporate with trauma that holds on to the memories of pain even when the flesh is healed. Mm -hmm. So so anyway, I looked and I was like, wow, I have uh, I have so much energy. I have so much um, um, clarity, or like mental, or like my cognitive functions had so improved. So the brain fog well had cleared completely. Uh, my skin looked uh, like completely cleared up and looked. Better so than that, that patch on your side. Yeah, the acne went away, uh, yeah. but also just my skin looked, you know, more like it looks now, like more glowing, more glowing, <laughs> yes. uh, more clean, more pure like glow, more, um, you know, like no blotchiness and and mm -hmm. things like that. But more than anything, it was my mood, the qualitative um, mm -hmm. improvements in my mood and my outlook. Like I had more patience with people. Um, I was more just calm and zen, more like positive mm -hmm. with things. And I was like, whoa, this is amazing. Where is this product? Why is this not available? At that time, I was in rental real estate. I was fixing up houses and trying to rent them out. Mm -hmm. And I basically just dropped my tools in this one house I was working on. And I was like, I'm going to make these. Cool. And I started to make a few. And then I got an endorsement from a doctor. You used to have to email me on this doctor's website and I would email you on PayPal and, <laughs> uh, and that's how I started making a, a, just a few of them myself and and that and so I formed the sauna space and mm -hmm. made the logo and made a website and was doing everything myself and and I, I wanted to I wanted to just make one thing right and that was 10 years ago and so now I have um, a growing company. I have like 36 employees and congratulations. Uh, we've kind of made it kind of, uh, we're still trying to get the word out there. Certainly yeah. the mainstream is not really aware of sauna and of light therapy and particularly, you know, you mentioned infrared technology. Mm -hmm. When, when I say infrared, everybody thinks of the wood box saunas and the farm infrared technology. Yeah, exactly. That's, and I want to dive into that too we'll, we'll, and talk we'll, about Yeah, we'll, we'll dive into that and yeah. we'll talk about that. But essentially, yeah, I, I brought to market the, the world's first electric sauna uh, in a more modern, um, beautiful form, dealing with some product design issues that were necessary. And, you know, look, I just wanted to I kind of just invented it for myself. I wanted <laughs> yeah. to look and feel better, but then I realized um, it was basically uh, a few saunas in, really. It was like five or 10 saunas in making it for other people. But a woman called me, one of my customers called me and she was crying. And she, she was calling me to thank me because mm -hmm. she had gotten her life back because of this shabby sauna that I made for her. And it was just like, I was like, had so much gratitude, like made me, uh, you know, tear up what she was saying. I was like, wait a second, I get all this gratitude and um, I get to make something really beautiful and cool and it's healing people and it's ethical and they pay me up front, you know, <laughs> and like rent. Yeah, yeah. And I was, yeah, that's when I was like, oh yes, I'm, wow. I'm going all into this. And so that was, that was 10 years ago. Yeah, and you got to make a living from your purpose is you stepped into realizing that this is actually a greater purpose. Oh yeah, this is definitely my higher self. I love that. Yeah. <sighs> so then let's, before we kind of dive into what I want to talk about as far as how this technology can benefit women going through explant surgery, let's talk about the technology a little bit. So there are two aspects to this and, and I am certainly not an expert, so that's why you're here. Um, but there's light therapy and heat therapy, mm -hmm. right? So there's two different aspects, two components, each with its own benefits. Am I right? Just yes, absolutely. That? Okay, absolutely. cool. So how do those And they need each to be, work? each needs to be understood in turn. They're certainly synergistic, mm -hmm. but we're, we're, we're activating different biological systems in the body. Okay. So what do you want to talk about first? 
let's do the light therapy because I think that you know that red light is pretty iconic a lot of people are seeing red light therapy so let's talk about the light component of it first yeah so the the origin of light therapy is heliotherapy which is sun therapy mm -hmm. the sun nurses all life on earth let's not forget that we wouldn't be here without the sun i'm a sunshine baby i love the sun we all love the sun mm -hmm. so we're like plants mm -hmm. we eat light mm -hmm. uh, we don't engage in photosynthesis we engage in mitochondrial stimulation so every cell of the body in the animal uh cell or in the animal um you know, uh, except red blood cells. So almost every cell type in the body has mitochondria in it. You may um, more likely understand that as like the power plant of the cell that makes the cellular energy and that's the big difference between plants and animals. But the mitochondria is very interesting. It's this, uh, it's this um, basically bacteria thing. It's, it's its own entity that incorporated into a, uh, a prokaryotic cell billions of years ago and created a symbiotic relationship where mm. the mitochondria said, hey, can you give me some protection? I'm all out here on my on my lonesome. Let's work together. And and the cell said, uh, okay, I'll give you protection. You give me more energy, but also I want you to fix me when I'm broke. Ooh. So cool. this, the mitochondria doesn't just fuel the cell with energy uh, through cellular respiration. Um, Upon the stimulus of near-infrared and red light, it turns into a cellular repairman. It um, does a, a wide array of beneficial rejuvenative, restorative effects in the cells. And so uh, some of those effects are inflammation reduction, uh, energy production. It increases the energy production of the mitochondria. Um, you have you have uh, uh, inflammatory mediation that occurs. You have in uh, increased uh, tissue oxygenation and uh, increased blood circulation. Mm -hmm. You also have very interesting things like cell, like regenerative effects in the cells. You get cell growth factors that are produced and you get anti-aging effects because you, um, mitochond like mitochondrial stimulation results in the gene, the transcription factors. So the enzymes that control gene expression to be like corrected and optimized and so it literally mm. has an anti-aging effect by correcting your how your uh, blueprint of your cell is read um, cool. so all very very fascinating very amazing so imagine that you can do that in every cell of the body so it's not just your skin that mm. improves it's your brain your nerve cells your pancreatic cells your liver cells every cell of the body benefits from this mm. so uh, it's really that simple um, the wavelengths that do this are a very narrow band of light. Um, and if you look at the sun spectrum, it's this huge, broad spectrum that peaks in the visible light range. Um, and then there's this, it's a curve like this, and then there's a long tail into infrared. But if we look at what's emitted, um, as far as what triggers mitochondrial stimulation, it's red light and part of near infrared light. It's 600 to 1,000 nanometer wavelengths. Mm -hmm. Red light is 600 to 700 nanometers. And then near infrared is 700 to 1500 nanometers. So from 700 to 1000, the near infrared, the, the higher energy near infrared portion, we get mitochondrial stimulation as well. Okay. And I like to, to point out something really important here because most people understand this as red light therapy. The sun is like, oh, I forget, it's like 12, 15% red, but it's 40% near infrared. But also because of tissue penetration, Near infrared is what we mostly experience. Red light doesn't penetrate deeply. Mm. So if we want to do light therapy on our brain, only near infrared light penetrates bone tissue. So if we're, we're trying to do red light therapy on our head, it's doing nothing to our brain. It's stimulating the cells and a little bit of the bone. It's but more it's, surface level. It's, it's all very surface levels. Yeah, okay. where, whereas the near infrared can penetrate many inches into the body. Again, the only wavelength that penetrates bone tissue, this has to do with the um, water absorption and, and some quantum mechanic type stuff. But mm -hmm. all that to say that even though the sun is 40% near infrared, in terms of photons per second experience, when you're outside in the sun, you are getting 70% near infrared because that's what's going in deep and getting those deep organs and, and tissues. So the magic, band of light from the sun is absolutely near infrared. It's it's the majority of the sun's emission. It's the only wavelength band that 
penetrates deeply to stimulate the mitochondria and the deepest cells of your body. And it does other things too. It activates what's called cellular melatonin, for example. Okay. So melatonin is the body's number one antioxidant. It's very important. Um, it's, it's used to neutralize free radicals. And so this is actually a really interesting newer understanding of melatonin. Um, it was thought that most of the melatonin was produced by the pineal gland. Right. And then released um, into the bloodstream sort of at the end of the day. That's mm -hmm. um, As the sun is going down. As the sun goes yeah. down after the blue light stimulus in the day causes the, mel the melatonin to be produced in the pineal gland. And then it gets released at the end of the day. It turns out that 94% of the body's melatonin is actually cellular. Mm. It's close to the mitochondrial membrane within the cells, not in the pineal gland, not in the blood. And it, guess what? The production of the cellular melatonin is stimulated by near infrared light. Wow. And so wow. on the mitochondrial membrane where all the cellular, while the energy production occurs, that's where 95% of the body's free radicals are being produced all the time. So the body has this brilliant built-in mechanism to neutralize all of that free radical production with cellular melatonin, but only if you get near infrared light. Mm. All, all of this um, speaks to our ancestral experience of getting lots of sunlight each day. Right, but today, in today's environment, most of us aren't getting enough. Would that be right? Because we're inside yeah. a lot of the day, you know, we are just inside at our desks, on our devices. Um, a lot of people, I mean, Sometimes it's just environmental too. You might not live in a very sunny climate or... Or when you go outside, you're clothed. You're clothed, exactly. We're not running around nude. Well, not all of us. Um, depends where you live. And a lot of people are actually then lathering up with toxic sunscreens to protect themselves from the sun. Um, but coming back to that, so um, your technology though, so it focuses on the near infrared and you've got the red light in there as well but you've omitted the harmful uv rays and the blue light right which are both also found in the sunlight Is yes right? yes well the, the, yes uh so to be sure ultraviolet light we we have an adaptive mechanism in our body to make vitamin d based on ultraviolet light uh, stimulus but um Make no mistake, ultraviolet light and blue light are killer wavelengths. They're too high frequency, they're high energy. So ultraviolet light is ionizing radiation. It, it literally damages our DNA directly mm. and has mutagenic effects. Blue light is also referred to as high energy visible light. That's why we're, people wear blue blocker glasses now because blue light causes free radical formation. It does, it's doing the same thing as ultraviolet light. It's just not quite as strong and powerful. Mm -hmm. So they are killer wavelengths that do come with the sun, but what when you're in the sun, you're getting a small fraction of ultraviolet and blue, and you're getting this huge mega dose of healing near infrared, mm -hmm. which is uh, photoprotective. It's protecting you from the ultraviolet light, and it's also right there healing and neutralizing the free radicals that the blue light um, um, causes, and also even some of the mutagenic effects that ultraviolet light can potentially cause, the mitochondrial stimulation is there fixing the gene transcription all the wow. time. So if you get a lots of sunlight, um, uh, at least you're getting all of that healing near infrared. So yeah. uh, unfortunately, yes, nowadays we live indoors, all of the light is fluorescent or LED, it's all blue only light. Mm. So we're not getting the sunlight's near infrared at all, and then we've um, exponentially increase our exposure to this blue light stuff that we're getting indoors and it's it's very it's been you know it's, it's to our detriment it's very very damaging so with my technology though it's very important to distinguish it from LED technology LED technology is a digital spectrum it's a spiked monochromatic spectrum so an LED like a red light LED panel it has a one, has a spiked emission at 660 nanometers in red and it may be a combo panel that has another spike at 830 nanometers, which is a near infrared. But there are these spiky emissions. You can think of it kind of like synthetic vitamin C powder. Okay. Um, where the incandescent bulb is more like the orange. It's light in its natural form. It's analog light. It's nature's light. So with, with my sauna, using incandescent light, I'm mimicking the sun's the quality of the sun's light, not just 
not just the wavelengths, but the curve of the light and the shape of the light in terms of the spectral emission. But yes, um, it's um, the incandescent bulb and the sun are both incandescent light sources. So the sun is the great incandescent in the sky. What is incandescence? Incandescence is how nature produces light. If you heat an iron rod up hot, it glows red, right? Mm -hmm. That's incandescence. So materials in nature, when they reach a certain temperature, emit li emit light very in a very natural, predictable fashion. The physics actually predicts using like Planck's law and stuff. And you can you can basically look at the sun and say, okay, it's seven, it's six, seven thousand Kelvin. It's very hot. And then you can extrapolate the spectrum, and then you can measure every wavelength of the sun, and and, and graph that, and it perfectly matches the predicted spectrum. It's called the black body radiation. It's the incandescent spectrum. So you can look at my bulb and know that the tungsten filament inside is about 25, 2600 Kelvin, and you can map the emission and measure it, and you get the same thing. So we're producing light like nature produces light, and that's mm -hmm. what our bodies want. They don't want, the, you know, there's, there's definitely a role that vitamin C powder plays. If you get sick, I, I mean, I've used that as well, liposomal vitamin C. But I eat the oranges. The orange is what I want to eat every day mm -hmm. so that I don't get sick. So right. um, the incandescent technology that I use is very different from the LED technology. One, in it being broad spectrum, broadband light and having all of the wavelengths in there. And two, um, the light therapy is coupled with the heat therapy that comes from light, which is also a big mm -hmm. point of confusion that we'll talk about maybe in a little bit about the difference between different sauna technologies. But if we're talking about the difference between light technologies, really that's it. Incandescent light is broad spectrum light. It doesn't flicker um, and it gives you the full complement of the healing wavelengths of the sun. But my bulb has no ultraviolet light that's emitted and the red glass filters out the small amount of blue light that is generated by the filament. So awesome. there's none of the killer wavelengths coming out, but we get the full complement in its natural analog light form. Wow. Um, wow. Okay. So first of all, how can you not trust your technology? Cause you know your shit. <laughs> Let me just say that. I don't know if I can say that. Um, on my podcast, I use that word, <laughs> you can say it. You already did. Uh, but, um, just listening to you speak, I can tell how much you've just lived and breathed this technology because you believe in it, you know it, you trust it. And so thank you. Uh, let's talk about, now you mentioned to me already that you have some women in your community using your product who have been through breast implant illness, um, been through explant surgery. Uh, so, you know, you already touched on the brain fog, the inflammation, and how this can really play a role in healing all of that. Um, women who still have their breast implants inside their body and are still, that means like their body is obviously still fighting that root cause, right? It's still inside the body. But could they still have benefits from using red light therapy, uh, even though the implants are still inside their body? Yeah, the benefits are still there. You get inflammation reduction. Um, you get immune modulation also as a benefit of light therapy. So it, it programs your immune system to be stronger in its initial reaction phase and then be more effective in its stage two reformation phase when the immune system needs to calm down mm. and like uh, metabolize the pro-inflammatory cytokines and things like that. So, so immune modulation is a huge benefit of what are we what is photobiomodulation, light controlling biology, which is a, the, t the technical term for light therapy. Light therapy really only comes, by the way, from red and near infrared light. There's blue light receptors in our body, but they're more, they're more designed for circadian rhythm programming, the pineal gland stuff and, right. um, and all that. But if we talk about the healing light therapy, it's, it's red and near infrared and really primarily near infrared um, that does the magic. So. Immune modulation is a huge thing. Uh, sauna does that too, uh, interestingly. Uh, it boosts your immune response. So when you, have, when you have a foreign object in your body, your body constantly wants to get rid of it, whether it's yeah. a surgical implant or a tattoo or uh, a chemical port or um, you know, even uh, you know, um, some types of teeth implants and yeah. other things. 
the body sees it as a foreign entity and it's a it, threat and it wants to try to metabolize it and get mm -hmm. rid of it so a, a breast implant is so large that the body can't metabolize it and it's also um, something that that uh, just like just like knee implants and hip implants uh, leads to uh, growth of bacteria yes. that live around it. So, mm -hmm. so yes, you know, whilst that's in there, that's going to persist as an issue. But yeah, you will. I would say you would definitely get immediate relief because you're helping the body to heal what's mm -hmm. going on. You're you're strengthening the body and helping it combat this situation where it has this foreign entity in it. So inflammation yeah. reduction, pain reduction, increased blood flow, helping the body um, um, excise those pathogens and then eliminate them from the body through through uh, through sweating, through detoxification. Mm -hmm. We're also rebuild, helping regenerate and rebuild the tissue that's damaged or inflamed. Mm -hmm. uh, and inflammation reduction is probably one of the biggest things. And inflammation is such a core contributing factor to disease. Yeah, and to all of the very long list of breast implant illness symptoms. I mean, they're all at the core inflammatory responses. Um, so, okay, so it's gonna be great before surgery. And then also, you know, I was just thinking as you were talking about the immune response and those benefits, um, what a great way to actually prepare for going into surgery as well, to make sure that your body, your cells are ready to heal and regenerate after you've been in surgery. So let's talk about that as far as surgery recovery, scar healing, all of that. I know that um, this really has an incredible skin rejuvenation effect, right? So uh, what is it that helps with the healing of scars and wounds? Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. So that was the first, one of the first things that was studied uh, clinically in the use of low-level light therapy of, of light therapy for, um, for 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 fixing something was wound healing. Mm. So um, and actually, it's interesting. The bulbs that I use, I'm, my bulb is a specially designed bulb that is in, basically improved upon the original heat lamp. Uh, my bulb is called the Thermalite bulb. It has a filament that's um, especially tuned to run at a higher Kelvin. So it basically emits more light therapy wavelengths than a, than a more light therapy wattage than a normal bulb. But the regular incandescent heat lamp has been used to, for wound healing for racehorses for like 50 years, um, uh, very effectively. So wound healing and scar healing are kind of similar though different things. So mm -hmm. wound healing and post-surgery uh, uh, is something that light therapy, you know, is, is very powerful for. Um, and even not even surgical wounds, just regular wounds that people have. Uh, that's very well documented in the literature. So that's uh, pretty widely used. But scar scars are a different thing. So the wound is healed, and now you have the scar. So, so scar is a tissue where. Um, there's not, all the blood vessels are messed up. Mm -hmm. There's not good blood flow to it. Totally, yeah. And, and the orientation of the, of the cells is in a strange way. And the way the wound healed led to, you know, some people have like keloid scarring where you get too much um, like mineral and other deposits kind of in the scar area and it makes the scar look like a scar. Mm. So what light therapy and sauna do is they, um, Imp they increase, uh, they vasodilate, so they increase blood flow, mm -hmm. inc increase tissue oxygenation, and increase blood circulation to those areas. And so you see some really great research and results in scar reduction mm -hmm. using light therapy. And I'm trying to avoid talking about sauna because we're going to talk about that next, but sauna as well. Um, yeah, so um, when you say sauna, are you talking more specifically about the heat yes. aspect of it? Okay, cool. Yeah, because they work synergistically, right? Yeah, so so when you heat up tissue uh, for a sustained period and the body is passive, so you're not exercising, you get, um, you get things, you get improved blood, you get the same kind of things, improved tissue oxygenation, improved blood circulation. You also get, you, um, you cause vascular shear stress. So you stress gently stress the blood vessels and the cardiovascular uh, tissue the, the, um, and they, it, it causes like in the scar tissue, it causes new blood vessels to be formed. Mm. And the blood vessels that are there, it causes the lining of the walls of the vessels to thicken and become stronger. 
So the tissue becomes, as you continue to do sauna therapy, it becomes more invigorated, and with light therapy too, it becomes more invigorated with better blood flow because mm. you're literally forcing new blood vessels into that area. And so when you do that, blood brings in all the nutrients and takes away all the all the the waste. And so when you do that slowly but surely, you get um, you get wound healing, you get scar reduction. Also with the light therapy, you uh, the mitochondria promote cellular re regeneration through growth factor production. Right. And, and also the gene expression. So you get the cells start to regenerate themselves. And and as the cells like divide and old cells die and new cells are made, like you, this tissue begins to improve. So so light therapy has been used quite substantially quite effectively for, for scar reduction and in our customer community for sure. Yeah. And so having that combination of the heat, like you said, to kind of open up those pathways into the scar tissue, bring the blood flow there and then put the light therapy on top of that. Having that combo is amazing. Um, and that goes for really uh, all post-op. It's mm, not just this, like, yeah. Uh, for example, um, um, for women who have breast cancer and decide to do radiation therapy, the radiation therapy causes chapping of the tissue and it, um, the skin, mm -hmm. and it makes the skin, uh, it damages the skin, yeah. you know, because it's ionizing radiation. So there's a, a lot of impressive research in using light therapy to heal and regenerate the skin tissue post uh, radiation therapy. Mm, that's awesome. Yeah, and then obviously after mastectomy, I can imagine that this would be just incredible for helping with scarring and um, uh, just all of that tissue healing in the area. Uh, so then moving into more of the sauna effects, the, the heat therapy effects, we're talking about detoxification now. We're going deeper, right? Um, so let's talk about like what are those detox <clears throat> benefits? Well, uh, the body um, detoxes in three ways, the urine, the bowels, and the skin. And that's the primary way the body re removes poisons mm -hmm. and keeps the body pure, the temple pure. And when the temple's pure and clean, the, everything works right. Yeah. So when we don't use the skin to detox, as most of us don't use, any, use anymore, the other two organs of elimination get overwhelmed and then we develop an infection of some kind and then the immune system has to come in, white blood cells come in and fight things off and then we create antibodies. Mm -hmm. But those immune responses are, are stage two backup systems where if the urine, bowels and skin as an excretory detox organ are working well, uh, they take care of all the problems. So. Um, when we sit in the sauna, we basically heat our bodies up. Our, the, the outcomes of sauna that lead to the benefits of sauna result from sweating out one pound of water and raising the core body temperature up three degrees. Mm -hmm. So if we look at the cell level, when we raise the cell's temperature by three degrees for a period of minutes, um, what happens is heat shock proteins are produced. These are proteins in the body that are dormant at resting body temperature. You, they only um, are produced when the cells heat it up. Heat shock proteins do two things. The more commonly understood thing is they help cell detox. So yes, sauna detoxes you. Mm -hmm. I think everybody understands that. Mm -hmm. The other role that they play is probably more interesting and more important, and that's that heat shock proteins refold and correct protein structure within the cell and also fix the the proteome, so the concentration of proteins and also where they're at in the cell. Thank you for explaining all these words <laughs> as you go through. Yeah, this. yeah. Well, it's all like, you know, you can get confused with all this stuff, but essentially the, the proteins are the line workers of the body. Mm -hmm. They do all the work. They're in every cell of the body, billions and trillions and trillions of proteins. Proteins are, if you've ever seen them online or on a, in a picture, they're like these complicated folded structures that look like tissue and ribbons coming out of it. Uh, they're super complicated and this complicated structure is supposed to talk and do its work by like connecting with other complicated protein structures and when the proteins are made by the cell so the the dna is red 
and, and the RNA goes over to the ribosome in the cell and makes the protein. And, the, and it might be a low level protein or it might be an enzyme or it might be something really special. But um, as soon as they're made, 20 or 30 of them, 20 or 30 percent of them are already misfolded. Wow. So it's actually um, a validation that we're supposed to be creating heat shock proteins frequently and routinely to constantly correct the folding that's uh, going on. So mm -hmm. basically when we sit in the sauna it's detoxing us but the heat shock proteins are also uh, restoring optimal protein function and cell function within the cell and outside of the cell. I'll give you a really concrete example, uh, and that's insulin. Mm -hmm. So everybody's dealing with insulin resistance you yes. know, nowadays, yes. uh, to some degree or another, whether we recognize it or not. Mm -hmm. So the insulin is made by the pancreas and it's released in the blood and it goes to the cells and it's supposed to bind to an insulin receptor protein, this like tail that hangs out of the cell. When it doesn't bind well because the insulin receptor protein's not folded correctly, you get uh, you, you get reduced insulin signaling and so the pancreas releases more insulin and more and more and more and you get what's called insulin resistance mm -hmm. which leads to various metabolic diseases. Mm -hmm. um, so the heat shock protein uh, can go out of the cell and fix the folding on the insulin receptor protein and improve the insulin signaling wow, which reduces insulin that. resistance. That's incredible. So here you have a cellular a very simple cellular corrective process induced by hypoth hyperthermia, heat, um, that's, cr that's correcting a higher order function of the body, a hormonal system, which is the highest system in the body. The hormones yeah. are the controller molecules of the body. Yeah. So that's just one example where you can extrapolate, hey, if I'm heating up my whole body, this is going on in the trillions of cells in my body, and the cellular function is being re-optimized. The proteins are working better. They're talking to each other better. And, um, and so sauna doesn't just purify you, it restores you as well. Mm -hmm. And so when we look at sauna, like what does sauna do for us? It's um, the best way to describe it and the simplest way to describe it is that sauna increases our health span. Sauna increases the years of our life within which we're healthy. Yes. Another way of saying that is sauna reduces all cause mortality. It reduces our risk of dying of all things. So that's a major outcome that's been validated by um, a large cohort study of 2,000 Finnish males in 2015. So like, that's on the map now. You can't deny that. That's one of the, it's probably the only therapeutic in the world that can claim that to mm -hmm. increase health, you know, like increase health span uh, big time. Mm -hmm. um, the same, um, but the same study was extended for another five years where instead of looking at cardiovascular death, they looked at dementia and they found the same outcome. So the study basically, this is the Lao Cannon study, but um, it basically concluded, hey, the people that use sauna one day a week, are um, their risk of cardiac death and heart attack is reduced like 30% or something like that, wow. 30 to 40%. But the people that use sauna three times a week had an additional 30 to 40% reduction in their risk of, of heart disease. So um, it's, if you're using sauna one day a week, you're going to live a lot longer than people who aren't. But if you're using sauna three times a week, you're going to live, you know, that much, you know, 30 to 40 percent, um, um, maybe not 30 to 40 percent longer, but you're going to be living a lot longer with better dramatically reduced, better quality of life mm -hmm. than the people that are using sauna one day a week. Mm -hmm. And the same um, outcomes apply to dementia. So it's incredible. I, that's yeah, the way it affects. So like those two things, like live longer and my brain's going to work right. Even yeah. when I get old, there's also no other therapeutic really in the world that can claim that to reduce dementia across the board. So we're talking about all these, uh, diseases now that, um, are related to plaques being formed in the brain, whether it's mm. Alzheimer's or, or so many other things that people are dealing with that conventional med medicine really has no answer for at all. Yeah. And here is this age old practice, this simple concept of just sitting on your lazy butt in the sauna. And it feels so good. And it feels so good. And it really feels good uh, when you do it my way with the incandescent light because the light therapy, I mean, it, uh, it's, like, it's like a firelight. Mm -hmm. It's like sitting in front of the campfire. If you've tried a regular sauna, um, that's the big difference. The regular sauna feels really hot. It can get overwhelming. And it can be a little intense, especially yeah. for people who have under uh, health issues. Mm. Maybe they have thermoregulatory problems or their mm -hmm. body, especially people with autoimmune. 
you can tell them all day long that sauna is going to increase their health span, but they can't really tolerate yeah. a traditional finished sauna. It's just not comfortable. Mm -hmm. So then, you, then they can try, you know, far infrared saunas, but far infrared saunas because they're using far infrared wavelengths to heat the body take forever to heat the body up. So you preheat it for an hour and you're in there for 45 minutes to an hour. And it still doesn't like have that mmm, ah feel <laughs> like when you're sitting in front of the bonfire. Yeah. So when you use the incandescent light, it's this feeling of warmth where you feel like a lizard when you're in front of the sun or in front of the campfire. You get this, there's a joy. There's, yes. you know, there's neuro, uh, there's monoamine neurotransmitters that are released. So serotonin and dopamine get released. When yeah, because it feels good. And it feels good. I've sat in your saunas. It feels incredible. You're sitting in there. I didn't want to come out. Mm -hmm. It felt like a little safe sanctuary away from just all of the... All of the toxins of the world you know and um, yeah. and that's a big part of it you already you know touched on the the stress and emotional health benefits of sauna and that's huge because this is an emotional journey it's it puts so much stress on you um, the yeah just feeling like you know you've you've gone through so much change you've shifted so much uh, it can just be a big emotional load and so having that to really that that space to go in to go inwards to reconnect with yourself to come to a place of tranquility zen and and just something that feels really good for you as well that goes so far yeah and I think we should uh, definitely touch on that real quick so light therapy uh, uh, appears to have some pretty tremendous benefit to neuropsychiatric symptoms in general so mm. uh, it makes you feel good if you're already feeling okay and you're healthy but if you're if you uh, are feeling depressed if you have, if you have anxiety if you have bipolar if you have um, um, mood issues and negativity and irascibility uh, light therapy uh, is has appears to have some tremendous benefit for those things and so it all kind of makes sense if you just step back and say wow when i'm outside getting sunshine and fresh air yes and i have loving relationships and i feel loved and i'm going to sleep on time like i feel good i feel refreshed i mm -hmm. feel like myself mm -hmm. so that's a big difference between a regular sauna and my type of sauna is incorporating the light therapy into it in the session makes it feel joyful and fun and yeah. an escape and you get out feeling energized and invigorated and you're in a, a zen state mm -hmm. but certainly as you continue to do it you'll find that for the rest of your day and all the time all of a sudden you you feel better your your mood is more positive you're more calm it's calming your nervous system for example right. it's where our nervous systems because of the strange synthetic world we live in are kind of stuck in fight or flight state all the time, the ancestral experience is not that way. We're only yeah. in fight or flight when the lion was attacking exactly. us. Exactly. Uh, probably 10% of our waking hours were in fight or flight. Now that's flipped. 90% of the time, due to the electromagnetic stress, the stress, uh, you know, the poor nutrition, the way we live our lives, and not getting all these nourishing aspects of the sun and of sauna and other things, um, they we're in a permanently stressed out state. So. Yeah calming the nervous system to improve sleep, to improve mood, to really uh, heal the body yeah. and, and heal the mind. is uh, It's so essential to, I think, have that, especially because we just don't get enough sunshine. So if I'm already in the sauna, why wouldn't I want to get light therapy in the natural form at the same time? And if totally. I can add on top of that some grounding therapy, mm -hmm. like our saunas have a grounding mat in it, and then if I can add on top of that... Um, uh, protection from man-made EMF. Yes. So. Yeah, and that is definitely one thing that sets your sauna apart as well, having that option to have the EMF protection. Um, but you're right, you know, we heal when we are in that parasympathetic state. And, mm -hmm. and I didn't even, going into this, I didn't even think about that, but this would be such a great way to get into that parasympathetic state. Oh, yeah. The, the light therapy relaxes the nervous system, so yeah. you can use the my photon therapy light on the back of the head like mm. before bed or just on the face or in the morning if you're feeling down just to kind of pep you up it it causes a parasympathetic swing of the nervous system but also sauna does that so the sauna actually is a 
somewhat of a sympathetic activity or increased blood flow, increased heart rate, right. yeah. you know, but you're resting, you're sitting mm-hmm. there and passive, you're not um, exercising. Exerting yourself, yeah. So the body's like, wow, I have all this energy and all this power now, I can go and heal stuff and fix myself. So uh, if you yeah. look at HRV, post-sauna, heart rate variability has a tremendous increase um, right after the sauna session off the baseline. That's a, that's a primary biomarker for like really good health is how how flexible your heart rate variability is like the difference between the heart rate and the inhalation and the exhalation um and so you basically after you get out of the sauna session you get a huge swing into the parasympathetic state so for Mm -hmm. me with my insomnia that was what was going on i was stuck in in a in a fight or flight nervous state trying to go to bed you know trying to get my body to go to bed and the body's designed to sleep in a parasympathetic state. Right. So I used the sauna uh, right before bed and that completely fixed and corrected my sleep issues. But then so once the body gets calibrated and you shift the homeostasis into a more optimal state, I do recommend at some point eventually use it in the morning because in the morning it calibrates your whole day. It gives you energy, it puts you in the flow state. Mm-hmm. It, it, it programs you to have really an optimal day. Mm-hmm. But having said that, you can use it any time of the day. You know, you use it the time of the day that allows you to use it three times a week. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Use it when it works for you. Um, okay. So to wrap this up, essentially, these your sauna is going to be amazing for pre-surgery. It's going to help those inflammatory um, responses that your body's having to the implants. It's going to help you, your body combat that and, and, and help your detox system. It's going to, you know, prepare your immune system for surgery. Then you go into surgery. It's going to help with the skin rejuvenation and the scar healing, the wound healing, all of that. Post-surgery, it's going to help with the detoxification um, and everything else that's going on with your body, the healing of, of everything. Then you've got the the neurological effects of it so you know stress and anxiety relief all of that and on top of that you are calming the nervous system putting your body back into that place of being able to heal and rest and recover and just feel really good holy shit (laughs) it does all of that yeah well i mean i'm not a healthcare provider i don't make any medical claims to that but no you, you can certainly look at uh thousands of customer stories on our website and you can read you can actually search the reviews by keyword and 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 hear some of these experiences yeah. so yes it's it's a growing anecdotal body of of, of research that um, the research is everything I've said thus far is in the research it's yeah. validated mm-hmm. and so you just put one and one together and understand that oh yes sauna does this light therapy does this yes and you give it a chance so with my product, you know, I, if you don't, if you don't like it, you know, I'd rather you not have it, honestly. So we offer a hundred day trial and that's amazing. Um, that's confidence. <laughs> yeah. I mean, most people keep, most people keep it, uh, if they try it and use it or really, they, they just love if, it. But, and especially if they apply themselves to it, like you said. In yeah. Time. And it does take time. So that's why I, I, I do that because sometimes particularly with autoimmune, uh, symptoms, it, it takes time to to appreciate, yes, there's a big shift going on in my body. And think about how long it's taken you to get to where you're at and all the trauma and all the toxicity that you've experienced in your life. Mm-hmm. You know, a three months is not that long. Uh, but everybody, if they use it with discipline during that, that trial period, really, you know, sees a benefit and enjoys it. And I would also like to, uh, real quick, just touch on the photon therapy light. So it's a sure. single bulb. It's a... It's a it's classically used for local symptom relief of any symptoms. So everything we've talked about doing that locally to the knee, to the head, mm. to the foot, mm-hmm. to the gut, to the chest, um, you just use it on the naked flesh um, in a targeted fashion, you know, for a limited duration. And uh, it's amazing. Uh, it, it works incredibly well for all those applications. But what's more interesting, I think, is it's being used now like uh, a campfire. So the, the light from my bulbs, uh, you know, using the photon, for example, cancels out the blue light, uh, the measurable blue light from the LED lights above you. Oh, wow. 
and cancels out the measurable flicker stress that's coming from the, the light. So what it's doing is it's introducing the missing near infrared band of light that you have outdoors. It's bringing that indoors. It's making the indoors like the outdoors. So it's, it's, it has a corrective effect on the lighting environment. So people mm -hmm. are using the photon for screen fatigue, for working at the computer all day long. Wow. For, What's the lifespan on it? Oh, the bulbs last like 5,000 hours. They wow. last for many years. So, you know, if you used it all day long, that would be three or four years of... Wow. Um, okay, that's impressive. Yeah. But, but yeah, that's, that's basically, it's a very interesting thing to, it's like a little happy light that vibes you up indoors because we're cool. not designed to really live indoors. But if we are indoors, you know, what can we do to make ourselves feel better, be nourished indoors? Yes. And the near infrared light is really the most powerful thing that we're missing. So people have, I like, I just have mine on all day long next to the computer and at home, when I get home, I turn it on and I have it on after dark. It's blue light, free flicker, free lighting after dark. Because cool. we don't want blue light after yeah, dark. Yeah, exactly. It really has a widespread app, you know, app application, and that is something that is maybe a little less intimidating than the sauna as an initial like, hey, I want to try this out and see what it's like and see what it does. You just put it next to you. It's yeah. so simple. Yeah, I love that. And I mean, your saunas are absolutely beautiful, though. By the way, so like, they are gorgeous, sexy saunas, <laughs> and you. they can really look beautiful in a space. There are a couple plants next to it. It's like home decor that does something great for your body. So I love that. Um, so where do we go to find out more about your products? Yeah, uh, our, everything uh, is on our website, sauna.space. Okay. Um, you can also check out our YouTube channel um, and our Instagram, at sauna space, as well as uh, Twitter and Facebook. Um, it's all at sauna space. But, but go to the website first because you can see all the product line there and you can go to our learning center and kind of understand, see the spectrum of the sun and the spectrum of, of our thermal light bulb and understand what EMFs are and yeah. kind of what do they do to the body and what is all this light and heat therapy stuff. Um, and uh, our, our products are all handmade in uh, at our shop in Columbia, Missouri and all Ooh. of our customer care is in-house. You get a lifetime of customer care support. You can always call us and, hey, I'm going through this, I'm feeling this, what's going on? Amazing. We're, open five days a week uh, for f actual real phone calls oh, I love it. Uh, or you can email us and um, and yeah sauna.space very cool okay I'm going to put a link to that in the show notes um, thank you so much for joining me and this was so informative I learned so much today uh, thank you. and thank you to the biohacking congress for having us this is such a great place to learn from scientists doctors biohackers and as well as explore products that really make a difference in your health and your life there are over 30 great speakers and 30 plus health companies here at the expo. And I recommend checking out biohackingcongress.com and get your ticket to the next Biohacking Congress in Miami in October, October 22nd, uh, 20th to 22nd. And if you can't make it in person, it is really cool because you can go and buy the digital recordings of all of the amazing speakers so you can learn so, so much. Uh, thank you for listening to Empowered Explant. You can see more episodes at explantpodcast.com. Be well. Thank you.